and good evening to you and welcome to, uh, to our class uh, tonight. Um, uh, good, good, uh, good evening, sir. Yes, you are welcome. And um, where to today, I'm going to cover two topics, like I'm going to club them together uh, into one session. Uh, last time that there was supposed to have been uh, taught in two different sessions. Uh, the first part will be the measures of position, uh, uh, which is uh, quartiles and percentiles. So which the outcomes for, for this part is that um, at the end of the session, we should be in a position to be able to calculate the quartiles and percentiles and also identify um, where are those points and also be able to draw box uh, lots uh, to, to measure the, the position. Um, the, in fact, in this topic, we concentrate much more on the in terms of the position and also you will re, you will re realize that we've been talking about uh, the measure of central tendency to saying that what we are interested on here is the, is the central points of in terms of the data that we 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 find ourselves having like when we are analyzing the data our interest is to divide like that data just to play around with the data and give a descriptive meaning of why, of that number what that those numbers tells you in terms of the position positioning in the data set. So the positions that we're going to talk about will be quartiles, percentiles, and then also what uh, deciles. Um, starting with the quartiles, uh, with quartiles, uh, values of the variables are divided into into quarters, or let's say into four equal uh, equal parts, which are called what uh, quartiles. So if you were to draw a normal distribution. Um, a graph like the one that you see on the slide there, um, and then you divide it into four equal half. So you will see that a a a one, um, in fact, it will equals to a two, a three, a four, meaning that it has got what equal parts. Then the first part um, from that red to the left is called what is the first quartile. The, the second one is the second quartile of which that uh, second quartile is also tells us the, the median or the middle point of the data that we have. Whereas the third uh, the, the uh, third quartile from that uh, red line Q3 to the right, it, it, it is what it shows us um, that the last 75, uh, 25% of this quartile. So now let's talk about the, 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 the Q1. In fact, I've already touched in terms of what is this Q1, it is also referred to as lower quartile. So which one we say 25% of data is smaller than that uh, where this point Q1 is. It divides the lower half of a data set in what in half, that is Q1. Whereas the Q2, as I've already indicated, that is the median. This one, it, div it divides the data set. So it means the left of it is 50%, and the right of it represents what the 50% of the data. Then we have Q3, which is also called what upper quartile, um, which represent 25% of data is larger than what Q3 because Q3 would be like sitting on the what 70, 75%. There is that in terms of the the Q3, which divides the upper um, half of the data set into what into into half. Then uh, with uh, percentiles, percentiles it, it provides information about how the data are spread over interval from the smallest value to the largest value. And values which are in the percentile that divided and ranked set into what um, hundred uh, uh, subsets. Um, then something to take note of is that um, uh, Q Q one, which is the which is the lower quartile. Is equivalent to a percentile or 25th percentile. Let me call it in that way. So it means if if they ask about what is the percent what is the percentile of a, a P15 or 25th percentile, so we'll know that you are going to is equivalent to what to to Q1. Whereas Q2, as I've already indicated, is the median. So it's like also if you were to represent it in terms of the the percentile or the percentage, is the 50th what percentile. 
And the last one, which is Q3, if this is equivalent to a 75th watt um, percentile. Like for example, the, that, that I've given to say, if they say, I find the, let's say P30, so it means they will be saying that, what would be the 30% of the of the data that, that you have? So now location of a percentile, how do we find that uh, location of the uh, percentile? So as a procedure, um, the first thing that you need to take note of is that you need to count the number of, of observation, uh, which is represented by the letter what letter N. I mean, how many number of um, observation do we have? And then you need to sort the data in ascending order from the smallest to the what to the highest, so that it can help you when you locate those um, quartiles. Now the formula, or mathematically, to calculate the percentile is given uh, as below there. Uh, to say um, LP, which is the, the that P will be the, the the percentile, is equals to N plus one with that N, which is the number of observation, and P, uh, which is that uh, that percentile uh, or percent percentage divided by what by by hundred, such that if if we were to talk about um, a quartile one, so. Replacing that P by 25 because it's straight like 25% is going to be N plus 1, then 25 out of 100. Q2, uh, I think this this should be should be wrong. Because I think it's, yeah, it needs to be L50. That is copy, copy and paste. It uh, should be L50, uh, which is going to be N plus 1, 50 out of 100. Yes, from the other mm -hmm. side, I think. Uh, Sir, so can I ask? Yes. Uh, would they give you using in the midst of data handling, like they give, would they give you a random probability question in statistics? Let's say mm. they say maybe if a data set is one, two, three, four, five, right? Mm -hmm. mm. They say find the probability of A, for example. Using the same data set we've been given, we've already found the quartiles and, the, and we know our percentiles, but they give us the probability question. Uh, that I mean, we have been touched the uh, probability. Probability, I think, oh. should be uh, our next, if not the second next uh, topic that I'm going to cover. Uh, so, so okay. you had any? Um, question that was, I mean, that had quartile as, as well as the, 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 the probability. Okay. Or you were just asking? I, I was I was asking regarding that because I saw our recent assignment say, mm -hmm. regarding probability and it has those quartile. I saw a question regarding finding a quartile. Okay. No, I was asking based on the assignment. Oh, because I cannot be in a position to 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 to, to respond to that because we are not dealing with um, probability. However, uh, what you need to know with probability um, is that I mean um, should be a, a number. I mean number that is not more than what uh, more than one and not less than what zero. So if you if you find it, it's represented in in percentile. So it means you need to convert. That a percent, like in a percentage, like if let's say it's um twenty five percent, in probability it will be zero point two five, right? So mm -hmm. you need to convert those values into decimal places and then be able to, uh, to to respond to the question that will be given. All right. Sir. Yes. All right. So yes, don't forget to to correct the. Uh, formula for Q2 and Q3 there that is not L25, the Q2 is L50, and the Q3 is what L75, is, as you can see on the um, on the formula there. I'm trying to see if uh, I can't edit this slide, but you have it on your um, on your guide, please. All right, another aspect that we calculate uh, using this quartile is what we call the inter quartile range of each year we want to see the difference um, uh, between the third and first quartile in a set of in a set of data um it's it measures the spread in the middle of 50 percent of the of the data um 
I think this one can also help us if let's say uh, we are. OK, well, let me put it in this way. Let's talk about the metric results. I think they have there's a point that they need to check this to see. I mean, the spread of the marks that that the metric um, results came out to say what is the interquartile range like you're trying to co to compare the the one who got the less versus the one who got highest to see if it is something that is acceptable you know and then from there that's when they need to to, to make a, a decision or, or judgment to say okay no no i think there's a very big gap here what do we need to do maybe let's try to increase maybe by five percent five percent to each and every then maybe for certain subjects uh, so they use those uh, kind of technique uh, like interquartile range of each year. You just need to, to develop that to get for Q3. You subtract it from the value for what for, for Q1. It will tell you the interquartile range. All right. Um, let's look at this activity one. Um, just to see. If I able to apply what I've just covered, I know that this is not a long session to do and uh, i believe that you've already done this uh, you'll help uh, let's work together all right Con consider a sample with the with data uh, of 20 27 25 20 15 30 34 28 and 25 then compute the q1 q2 and what q3 and the second one i find the p20 p65 and what p30 all right, let, let, let's start. I said, okay, um, I said we need to just identify how many the, the, the number of sample that that we have. Yeah. This. So what is the number of the fellows that we have? Uh, eight. It's eight. All right, thank you. Now, can we sort this data that we have? Let's start. Which one is the smallest? 15. 15. 15. The next 20, one? 20. 20. Another 20. 25. 25. Yeah, 25. No, hmm? just done 20. It's only 120. Yes. Okay. Yes. Then 25. Mm -hmm. Another 25. Okay. 27. Okay. 28. Okay. Eight. All right. The last one. Uh, Thirty-four. 34. Yes. All right. Thank you. So it means you have sorted your data from the lowest to the highest. So now, mm. yes. Yeah, so now we need to compute this uh, Q1. Um, how do we how do we uh, calculate Q1 when you are given this? L twenty-five. Okay, let's 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 see something. Mm. Q one is the twenty fifth percentile, so we'll say L twenty five is equal okay. to open bracket N plus one. Okay, N right. plus one. Plus one. Close bracket. 25 over 100. Okay. Meaning we're going to change oh, N. Okay. We're going to change N and put 8. It's 8 plus 1. Yes. Then here you can put, I mean, okay, let me use 100 the way it is, and here 25. Others you can decide, okay. You can take the common fa common factor of of twenty five and hundred. Would it be of, which is going to be one of four? Sorry. Would it be okay if? Oh, I was gonna ask you if I can put it in decimals or in fraction, like in simple fraction, like I'd say one over four times one over four or zero comma two five. Would it be correct? Would they mark it correct? Yes, it 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 sh uh, yes, it is. Um. It is. It is the same. Mm -hmm. So, so like like what I, like what I just said, uh, you can say one one over one over one over four oh. by taking okay. what the 
the, the common factor of 25 and 100. So it means like Which 25 is, equals 1 to 100, it goes what? 4. Then what is four. the final answer? 9 times 25 equals 4. Yeah. That's 25% of 9. If 50% is 4,5, then that means it's 2,25. Oh, wait. Okay, so... Okay, what is the final answer? I know that if you're using the Casio, ne, you just uh, type in the way how it is. It should give you the final answer. Um, then you press SD to, to convert to decimal. What is that answer? 2,25. 2,25. All right. Yeah. So now, so it means it is telling us that the location of the first quarter is between uh, this uh, is somewhere. Yeah, there's a number that is between 20 and 25. Am I correct? Because you yeah. say one, then two, then two, five. OK, so now how do we get the Q, the Q1? see so it will say one uh, q1 in fact is going to be um that is number what that 20 uh plus so with this 2.25 this 25 is like uh there is that zero like 0 0.25 right that is that needs to be shared mm -hmm. between that uh, the position um what position two and position three, all right? Am I correct? Yes. The zero point two five. Then into uh, twenty five minus twenty. Then what would be the final answer? Twenty five minus twenty. Four five. Uh, then one comma two five. The final yeah. answer. Yeah. It can it can be. Because we're saying twenty plus zero point two five into twenty five minus twenty. It's like it's twenty plus zero point two five multiplied by five. It should be a number between 20 and 25. If you find it more than that, so it's wrong. It says only one comment. It's 20 plus 0 0.25 uh, into. Because I'm getting 21.25. Yes, it's, it's, right. it's 21,25. All right, thank you. So this will be our Q1, Q1. So now the second one, Q2. A Q2, so it means going to be, we must first find the location of this Q2, which is going to be L50. Um, use the same formula to just only need to change this 25 into what into 50, uh, is, which is going to be again 8 plus 1. And um, we'll have you decide whether you want to say it's half. Because we're going to say 50 goes times to 50, it goes 1, then in 200, it goes what? 2 is the, is the same. So, what would be the answer? Uh, 4,5. 4.5. So, it means if you go to this data 1, 2, 3, 4, that number is going to be uh, the number between this 25 and what? And 27. So, with this being said, we'll say. Um, Q2 
So what would be the what would be Q2 now? You have identified that it's it's a number that is between um, number number four, one, two, three, four, and number what? And number five. So meaning that is going to be what would be the the answer? Okay, how do we get it before we reach the answer? So it means it's going to be 25. Oh. Okay, yeah, that was a mute. And then 0 0.0.5, 0 .5, which is sharing that I fall, I mean, from that value. Then into is 27 minus 25. What would be the answer? Uh, 34. Yes. It's going to be 34. Yes, sir. I don't think so. They have. One, two, three, four. Was that value needs to be between 25 and 27? 34 should be something wrong. Uh, 25 plus um, 0 0.5 into 27 minus 25 plus is 26. How did you get to 34? As I made a mistake, I said 4,5 instead of 0 0.5. 0 .5. Oh, OK, yes, because. um, Sir, yes. Uh, I can't understand the how we how how do we get Q1 and Q2? All right. OK, let, let's start with the first one. The issue of location, are you fine with it to say Q1 like when I was presenting to say uh, uh, Q1 is like um, 25th what percentile, right? You are fine with the, the way how we find the location? Yes, I'm fine with it. Okay, so if it's 2.25, 2 it tells you that uh, the, the, uh, that is the location of Q1. So it's like it's, it's, it's the second value. It's, it's the second value, but it's because it's 2.25, there is that, if, if you say 2.25 is the same as you say, Two plus zero point two five, right? So we mm -hmm. we okay, we keep that two aside. Ne? We said and that zero point two five or that quarter, it is the number that is between the second the second value and the what and the third value. So that's why we first write the first uh, value, which is twenty, which is sitting on the what position number two. Then that zero point two five, you share it between what? It's like yeah, we are sharing it between. Uh, the second value and the third value. That's this is how it is. It is found, and I know that. I mean, the, some other authors. Um, what what they normally do. Um, of which I th think you find that sometimes it becomes it gives us uh, different answers. Uh, like here, you find that they, they just think to say, okay, if it's two point two five, then they just decided no no. Let's just estimate this will be the value. Uh, the, the second one, which is this one, is 0 0.5. They can just say, no, let's get two values and find the average. That would be that location. But I've seen in your study guide that they use this uh, this formula. So we need to follow uh, this formula so that it may not co confuse you or get the wrong answer. I don't know if I've answered how do we get this Q1 and Q2. You just take, if it's 2.25, so it means must know that it's 0 0.25. That needs to be shared between those two values. In the, on the second one, because it was 4.5, 4.5 is like um, is 4 plus 0 0.5. So if you take that 0 0.5 and share it here, uh, then um, you get the answer. In fact, if you see here, this 20 is like we're saying it's, it's location 2, right? And then this 0 0.25, we are sharing it between what? A point, uh, a, a point 0.3 and point what? And point 0.2. The second one, this 2.25 uh, is this four is position is the number that is in position four. One, two, three, four is 25, right? And then the, the other half, we share it between the two. They sh that's that's what is saying. Is it better now? Yes, sir. I'm fine with it. All right. Thanks, Thank sir. you. All right. Thank you. 
Now let's uh, let's look at what the Q3. A uh, Q3, so it means 75. Uh, we need to first find the location. Is n plus one. Yes, 100, yes, 75. Uh, which is going to be 8 plus 1. Uh, you have 100. Oh, you can decide. Uh, 75, so it means which number can go, then you can go 25. So, how many 25? The 3 over 4. Okay, so what would be the answer? Yes, uh, six, six comma seven five. Six comma seven five. Okay. So it means it tells us that that uh, Q three is somewhere between. Okay, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, which is 28. Okay, let me go to it. Uh, it's Q3. Which is going to be, is 28, plus that 75 is going to be shared between the that value, which is on number six and number seven, which is going to be 30. Uh, minus what? 28. Then it gives you the value. What would be that value? What would be the answer? Okay, 28 plus 0 0.75 into... 29.5. 29.5. Yes. Yes. Because you can confirm that, I mean, this is the number, the number that you get here to be sure that you got this, the, the, the correct answer. It should be the number between these two values here. If it, be, if it becomes more, so it means you are wrong, right? Like here when we get this 26, you can see that it's a number that was between 125 and 26. And the other one between uh, 20 and, 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 the, and the other value. All right. So... That is that in terms of the, um, what do you call it? The, the first question. So let's look at the second one where we need to find the, what, a P20, P65, and P, P30. How do you go about these ones? Uh, let's see. Let's start with the. The P20. All right. Oh, by the way, so it means you must first find what the the location. Am I right? What comes first? Just get into P20. Let's get the, the 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 location for this, like L L twenty, which is going to be the formula is the same. Then instead of uh, those twenty five, fifty, seventy five, so it means because this is also a percentile converted to percentile, so it means going to be twenty out of hundred, um, which is going to be. 8 plus 1. You can decide. Um, 20 divided by 100. 20 goes 1 to 100. Is, it goes what? 5? Yes. Okay, 1 over 5. What would be the answer? Let me see. 20% of 9. Okay. If... 10% of 9 is 0, 1,8. 1, okay, it's 1.8. 1. 8. 8. Mm -hmm. All right. So, meaning that P of... Um, 
P20. Mm -hmm. So if you were to talk about that as a percentage, so still um, it's going to be between uh, the first one and the second one, 15 and what? And 20. And 20. Yes, so it means we're going to say it's 18 plus it's going to share that 8, which is going to be 0 0.8 uh, into, what is it, 20 minus how? Is it 18 or is 15? Where am I getting 18? Um, okay. 15 here. And if in here I'm typing this 18. All right, what would be the answer? 19. 19. 19. All right. Yes. Yes, you can see that is the number between what that 15 and what and 20. So let's look the second one, which is a P65. Okay, 65. Must first find the location for this 65. Uh, N plus one. Number is 65, which is going to be uh, eight plus one. Yes, 100. Yes, 65. Yes, what would be the answer? Uh, 5.85. 5.85. Yes, sir. All right. So it means is a value that is between uh, 5 and 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which is somewhere here, 25 and 30. They're going to share uh, this, this value. Let's see. What is that value? Uh, 65, P65 uh, is equals to, we say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is 27, plus then there is that 85, so it means 0 0.85. It will share be shared between um, 28 and what, 27. So what would be the answer? Uh, 27.85. Okay. Yes, which is fair enough. Is that number is between 27 and 28. Um, the last one, uh, which is what? P30. Again, uh, even this one must first find that location. Where is it located? Uh, 30 is equals to 10 plus 1. 100 is 30. We have 8 plus 1. And we have 30. I'm getting something like 2.7. So meaning that that um, that value should be somewhere between uh, 20 and 25. Did you also get 2.7? Yes, sir. All right, thank yes. you. Okay, here we have uh, P30. So it's going to be shared between, we said, um, 2.7, so it means it's 20, uh, plus that is the 7, which is 0 0.7 uh, into 25 minus 20. This will be our, what, 30th percentile. 20 plus 0 0.7 into 25. Minus 20, close brackets. I'm getting 23.5, which is acceptable. 
All right, let me move to the second. Uh, to the second activity. Um, it is more more the same as that one that we that we did. Okay, except okay, I think there's some additions in terms of this one. Let me see. All right, the following data shows the results for twenty top of the jackets range from a scale a zero. Uh, okay, being the lowest and 100 being the highest. Very long. Calculate the mean a Q1, Q2, and Q3, then interquartile range, then find the 90th and 70th uh, percentile of the jacket scale, then construct a frequency distribution for data using five class intervals with 40 being the lowest class limit. All right, so here we have got this data that we have. Uh, I'm trying to think about the space. All right, at least they, they told us that the, the, the value of N is what the number of sample is what is is 20. Mm -hmm. We don't need to count that. At least we know. So what we need to, to do here uh, is to uh, sort this we okay oh. okay let's sort the data now uh, from the smallest All right, which one is the smallest? Let's start. Sixty one. Sixty one. Sixty one again. Sixty one. Another sixty one. Sixty one. Oh, okay. How many sixty one? The three. The three. Yes. Okay. Yes. Sixty three. Okay. I mean, six, no, sorry, sixty two. Okay. And sixty three. Okay. Sixty four. Okay. Sixty six. Okay. Sixty seven. Okay. Sixty seven. Okay. Sixty eight. All right. Sixty nine. Sixty nine. And seventy one. Seventy one. Seventy one again. Seventy one plus eighty one. Okay, yes. there is what eighty one? Yes, and eighty three. Uh, eighty three is it the last one? Yes, okay. Let's see if I'm able to get this in one line. Okay, I think they fit. All right, so this is the data that we have sorted. So it's like cleaning data. All right, so now calculate the mean uh, Q1, Q2, Q3. Uh, this was just an, some sort of a re review <laughs> to, to see if you're able to calculate uh, the mean. So, what would be the mean here? Some of that. Really some yes. values divided by number of values so our exactly. number of values is going to be 20. okay let so, me do this uh, just wait a minute and um, we're dealing with the mean of the sample né? Uh -huh. which is going to, which is going to be x bar so then yes n 
on top here is the sum. Let's just say some of those observations. You just say I and the X. All right, yes. I mean, just say you sum the uh, sum of the observation divided by the number of the observation. So we have 20. Then what is the sum? If you add 42 until um, until the last one, what is the answer? What is the sum? Let me start with the sum. 1097. Yes. OK. So the final answer for the mean converted to maybe one decimal. Uh, 55. Oh, it's 55, right. 1097. Also, you have converted it, I'm sure it was something with a comma 99. Nine. It was, it was 54. Comma, 99. No, comma 85. And then how come did it came to uh, 55? Since eight, uh, but never mind. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Okay, let's just, let's just write it 54.85. Right. 54.85 years. All right, we have this value. Um, let, let's let's do the uh, the Q1. I'm sure even this one you've already calculated it. Q1 is what is uh, L25. Um, L, which is going to be n plus one. Mm -hmm. Yes, hundred. Yes, twenty-five. Which is going to be uh, twenty plus one. Okay. What is the answer? You have it. Five point two five. Five point two five. So. There's a background noise. Q1. Meaning that um, the Q1 will be on position 5, which 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is what? 61. And then we're going to share the remain, the remain, which is 0 0.25, with is, uh, that value, which is on position 5 and position 6. Uh, let's see. We're saying is. OK, one, two, three, four, five is 61, right? The same. This is what I'm getting 61 minus 61. Which will give us what? 61. Did you get the same? Or I made a mistake. You're quiet. Yes, sir. All right, thank you. So Q2, which is the median. Uh, let's first find the location of the median again. Can I just start here by saying 20 plus 1? Because by now you know the formula. Instead of retyping that. Uh, it's going to be 100. Yes, 25. Then what would be the answer? Sir, yes. The state of twenty-five will be fifty. Oh, yes. Thank you. Uh, ten point five. Ten point five. Yes, I also got the same. So now let's look at the Q two. So it means it's so we're going it's on a position ten between position ten and eleven. Let's see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, which is what sixty-six, and then zero point five will be shared uh, between uh, sixty-seven and sixty-six, which are occupying 
a position six and no, 10, 10 and what, 11? What is the answer? Uh, 66.5. 66.5. Yes, because it's the number that is you can find is between these two values. The last one is Q3. We start with this L75, which is going to be 20 plus 1 and 75 over 100. Which uh, the answer? Yes. Uh, the answer is 15.75. 15.5. So let's find the Q3, the Q3 now. It's going to be, so if it's 15 and 1, 2. OK, what is that value? Which is under 15 percent 15? Is it 67? Is it? Plus then the there's the rest point seven five, which should be shared between sixty nine and sixty eight. And what would be the answer? No, let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. There's something missing here. Which might mean that all my cal all our calculations is wrong. Let me see if my value are not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times two. There should be twenty, but here I don't see twenty. Am I correct? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. There are two missing values here. Which might mean that everything that we did is wrong. Let, let's uh, let's go back to our data. Forty-two is fine, right? Sir, uh, the yes. missing number are seventy-six and seventy-eight. Okay, seventy. Seventy-six and seventy-eight. Uh. Something went wrong. OK, how? Oh. OK, it's 76 and 78. Is that what you're saying? Sir, yes, sir. OK. Now it's going to change everything. Or maybe, uh, OK, only let's see the mean now. But everything. Is it going to be everything? No, Q1 I think will be fine. And Q2 will be fine, but Q3 is going to be affected. Uh, can we rework on the uh, this um, sum here? Just add it'll that. Be, it'll yes. be 1,251. 251. Okay, mm -hmm. which will give us what? Divided by 20, 20 62,55. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. So now let's look at Q3 now. Uh, we are saying so it means it's not affecting anything. Let's see. We are saying this is going to be position 15. Let's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen is seventy-one. So again, uh, fifteen and sixteen. Is 71. So it means that's going to be 71. 
no, this is going to be zero. I think this is correct. Am I right? That is the position of um, Q3. So now the interquartile range, uh, which is the difference between the the two, uh, let's say it's called IQR, is the difference between Q3 and what? Q1. Q1. Yes. So which is 71 minus what? 61. Which is what? 10. 10. All right. Thank you. So this is the interquartile range. So at least it's only 10, which is acceptable. But if maybe the difference was like uh, 20, 30, 30, then we have a problem that, I mean, they're not that close to, I mean, the data that you have is not close to other. If we were to talk about even the, the marks, will, they will just be uh, dispersed. I mean, all of, um, let's say, from zero to what, to 200. That's when we we'll start to be worried. But if it's, if it's 10, it, at least they are closer to, to each other. All right. Oh, in fact, we're talking about the jackets. OK, that's the range. The range, interquartile range of this is, is 10. OK. Find the 90th and 70th percentile of the jacket scale. Um, you have done it in this one? Can I skip this one and then we do the frequency distribution? Let's see. Do look at this. Then I'm, I will remove uh, this part. Okay. This will do. All right. Um. So what I'm going to do here, we have a table. I'm sure there'll be one, two, three, four, five. Okay. This will work. Uh, plus intervals and uh, frequency. Do you say frequency? Yes. What else? And um, did I say what construct a frequency distribution? Okay. Frequency. Maybe let me let me also add the next one here. What do I add now? Okay, all right. Let me say relative frequency. By the way, let me add another. Let just say total. Okay, so we have the data. So let's let's start. Can we do the class interval with forty being the the lowest and the five class intervals? Let's start. We have that data. The lowest value is 42. The highest is 83. I think we, we, we can uh, put in the um, how many class intervals for, for what? Five classes. Let's start. Okay. Let's say 40. 50. I know that um, I think even on your, on your guide, uh, you, you, the way how it is done, I don't want to do it the other way around. It's from, it's like this is 40 to 50, then it will say 50 uh, to 60, then 60 um, to 70, 70 to 80, 
and then 80 to what to 90. So this is how you construct uh, this frequency. I mean, this class intervals. So now let's look at the, at the frequency now. What are the values that are between 40 and 50? Uh, three. OK, three. 50 and 60. Uh, sorry, sir. OK. On the class interval of 40 to 50 is one. Which is what, 42? OK. Yes, sir. The second one, 50 to 60. Uh, two. Which is what? 53 and 54. Okay. Yes, sir. 60 to 70. Eleven, sir. Okay. 70 to 80. Four. 80 to 90. Two. Oh, all right. So when you add this frequency, it should give you the, that and that number of what? Um, what? The number of results. So are you getting 20? Yes, sir, we're getting 20. All right. Thank you. I'm just saying this so that those are some of the things that you need to verify when you do the calculations in statistics, because if you just get the answer, then you proceed with it. You might find that you are working with the wrong uh, wrong information, like the way we did there. If we didn't have to go back and count and realize, no, the data that we have is not what is not 20. We're just going to continue to say, no, we are right, we are right, we are right, and even uh, leave the exam to say you are fine. We need to verify. All right, so. Um, how do you calculate the relative frequency? Any idea? OK, let me say relative frequency. Should I say percent percentage? OK, it's fine. Um, we'll do the another another column that talk about. I'm just I'm just. Also using this opinion for you to 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 revise. So how do we get the relative frequency? Uh, so I think we're going to to say I so yeah, yeah. okay. So what is now, it's like? It's going to be one one divided by hundred. One divided by hundred. Yes, so, sir. So why are you getting the hundred? I'm using the oh shit. I so say. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. Okay. Um. Any volunteer? I think I used, I think I used the hundred for the percentage. Uh, yes, hundred for the percentage. But now we are still on the relative frequency. Okay, sir. Okay, let me hear from who's that? Uh, let's hear from Kosnati or. Swane. Oh, yes. Well, how can we find the relative frequency? Uh, uh, let me see. Sir. Relative frequency. Two to one. So one. Divide by what? Divide by ten. By ten. Why, why are you getting why are you getting ten? So I think that unlike I think it's not like the ten, like the ten is sort of like the one hundred. And each frequency here, one to eleven. I think that they represent a certain percentage. So let's say in the frequency which is one. Yes. One represents ten percent. Two represents twenty. That's what I thought. Okay, 
So this is the formula that you can use for the Sir? relative. Yes. You are changing yes. the mind now. Sir, I think I get it. We're going to divide one uh, one with 20. One divide by 20. Okay. Oh, uh, my. Okay. Let me just say N here. Um, number of sample. Oh. And here is a frequency. So this is what I'm looking at now. So look at that formula. Frequency for the first one is one, and then the total number of sample is 20, which gives, what is the answer here? One divided by, by 20. 0. Uh, 0. 0. 0. 0.05. Okay. So let me copy this. Okay, the second one, so it means going to be two. Zero point one. Okay. The third one is eleven. Okay. What is the answer? Zero point five zero five. Zero point five five, sorry. Okay. Then this one it's four. Divide by um, zero point two. Okay. This one is two divided by twenty. Zero point one. Zero zero point one. Okay. And it all has to add up to one. Ah, excellent. Okay. So yeah. Um you add this value, you must get what one. If you don't get one, so it means there's something what a missing. Bro. Yes. Um, so what if yes. you get something above one? Like even if by a slight margin, it's you get one comma zero zero one. So it means that would be a hundred percent. It can't be. Um, it can't mm -hmm. be because the, the frequency cannot be more than the total. But if let's say, say like you get like your relative frequency, like you get one. Comma zero, yeah, one comma zero zero one. So example. Okay, so it means there might be there might be something wrong when we do when we're rounding off uh, the the values. Oh. Yes, like maybe I can see. I don't know if zero point five five you say zero point six and zero point zero five you say zero point what one zero point one. Okay. Let me add them up. Yeah, no, the zero point, uh, okay, I'm see. saying the first one. If you were to convert everything to one decimal places, right? The first one you say is 0 0.1. So it adds up to one. Uh, even if you, you swap them like that. Like when I sort them exactly like that, because mm. 0 0.5 plus uh, 0 0.55 plus 0 0.05 adds up to 0, 0,6, right? Okay. 0, 0,6 plus 0, 0,2 is 0, mm -hmm. 0,8. Mm -hmm. Then 0, 0,8 plus 0, 0,1, 0, 0,9. Mm -hmm. 0, 0,9 plus 0, 0,1 is 1. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it, all, it adds up to 1. It adds up to 1. So now I say, let's say the first one, 1 out of 20, we're converting it to say, uh, because then the one decimal place is, yes, 0 and this 5, then we remove this 5, we say it's 1. And then this one, we say it's six. Can you calculate this? Let's see. Okay, so let's see. Zero comma one. Mm. It's gonna be zero comma two plus zero mm -hmm. zero comma eight. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be one comma one. You see. So that's where you can get those kind of things. So, but when it's just two two, I, I like two decimal places. Because one decimal place is just changes everything. Yes, Thank you. Because another thing that you can argue again, you say 
if you are saying one over 20 is 0 0.05, does that what does one over 20 equals to two over two over what two over 20 now? No, they're not equal because even if let's say this one two out of 20 is like a half of that, which is going to be like one over 10. Still not the same. All right, so the next one that I had someone here said uh, talking about the percentage. So it means if they say the one the percentage was that uh, insert to the right. A relative frequency, eh? what percentage? This percentage distribution. Of this data that we have, so what are going to do here? Um, you're going to multiply these values here by 100. Ne? What's the thing? So it's like 0 0.05 multiplied by 100. 0 0.0 is equals to 5. Yes, it's 5%. OK, you know that they will be in percentage. So let me just copy this. And then go down here. Then the second one will be 0 0.1, right? 0 0.1 multiplied by 100 is 10%. 10 OK, then this one 0 0.55 is 55%. And then this one um, 0 0.2 multiplied by 100, you get what? Is twenty percent okay? The last one is ten percent. Zero point one. Five percent. Yes. Is it five percent? Oh, no, 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 no. Ten percent. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, it's ten percent. So even when you add these values, they should give you what hundred to show that it's balanced. OK, any questions? No questions. No. All right. All right, thank you. I think uh, let me see if we still have. Oh, OK, this was part of that. It's the same question. Now the box plot, mm -hmm. which I'll just explain because um, I'm limited to draw this, but it's something that um, I will just I will just explain. The, um, the box plot, also this one is also useful for comparing data sets at once, like using the, I mean, it's a summary of the of the data of what we have just learned um, so far. So it's like a graph of a set of data obtained by drawing a horizontal line from the minimum to maximum values with quartiles labeled in between. And it also referred to as a what five value, five number summary of um, of the measures or the, the the position. So as you can see on the slide there, I just took this slide so that you can be able to see if you were to ask maybe to draw, or maybe just to identify the values. Maybe they say, what is the Q1 if, it's, if it's labeled? What is the median? Then you'll be able to pick out to read this um, uh, box plot or this kind of a, what, of a, of a graph. So um, if you were to, to, to draw this, um like the way how we, we did okay you need to know that the, the number of samples that that you have or the number of observation that you have so to that data when you saw that data you've been a position to draw a number line so it means you can have the scale of the number that you have as you can see here they're saying uh, the numbers that are below here they are measured in what in millimeter so starting from the lowest to the highest like if you put a ruler like when you draw a graph just you draw that number number line uh, in with with the equal what values. So now from the data that you have calculated the let's say the first quartile. So in fact, the first one on the data, you will indicate uh, you draw a line um, to indicate that this is the minimum value and the maximum value. So it means it will give you the what the the limit that all the value are between this value and this value. And you know that I mean. The difference between the two is called what the range, okay? So now um, you go, you find, you go and find the the, the location. In fact, you start by finding the location of the 
first quartile, and then from there identify what is that value. Then you go and draw this line that you that you see here, and then you calculate the, the, the median, you calculate the third quartile, then you draw the, the box like this with the uh, line between these two box, equal 25%, 25%, which represent what? The median. Then that's it, you have drawn this box plot um, that you have. So like an example, which I'm going, I'm not going to do. So if you can use this data that we have here um, to, to try to draw that, then you, you'll be fine. So it means this data that you have here, you will know how m the number of sample that you have. Um, sort it from the smallest, the highest, identify the smallest and the largest number, calculate the location for Q1 and find the Q1. The second one, which is the median, which is Q2, find the location, find the value, then the Q3. When you have those value, use the number line, with the value that we have here, you can see 33, 38, 40, whatever. Maybe you can start to say, okay, let's start from 30. Uh, up until I think the uh, largest number is 42. You can leave it maybe to 45, like that. Then you can draw this uh, box plot. So now, um, if you are asked to maybe to, to say whether, um, I mean, in terms of the skewness of the, of the data, which will be represented on this box plot, um, if it's like, it moves. Let me see here. If you can see that, I'm, I'm, I mean, the the lowest value is closer to to is closer to the, like it falls uh, to the left, and then then it leaves other values far to the what to the right. So that's where you can say that, that I mean, there's a, that is what right is skewed. So the data is skewed to the what uh, to the to the right, um, meaning that so many values they are they are on the on the, on the left then, but there are those. Uh, values that are just scattered, but that there are not that many going to the what uh, to the to, to the right. Which, like, uh, uh, let's say for example, we find that on the on the marks for the assignment, we find that let's say that the lowest maybe is ten, and then the highest might be ninety nine. But we find that most of the values they are just around sixty sixty percent. From sixty percent. We just see maybe value 75, we see 80, 82. 80. So that's where you find that that data when you plug, when you draw this kind of thing or when you calculate those quartiles and stuff, there will be what it will be what right skewed. There will be that distance. Whereas in terms of the uh, the left skewed, so it means so many people, if it was an assignment, got highest, let's say so many marks, and then there are very few. That are, are less than the what the the the, the max even the, the 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 quarter. So it means from let's say Q1, there are not many values below that Q1. But we find that from that Q1 to Q3, there are so many values that are close uh, to each other. I think this is what you you, you would like to 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 have. At least I mean you find that I mean so many people have I mean got higher marks than those who got what less. But when you find that it's in the middle, so it means that is what balance. Uh, find that people, so many people are just around, let's say, around 30, 40, 50, 60 there, then at least uh, you'll be able to say at least they're close to each other. So even maybe the, you can say even the paper or the assignment was fair enough. That is that in terms of the um, quartiles and percentiles and ready to, to cover. The second part is about the measure of relationship, uh, which even here. At the end of this is, is second um, session, at the end we should be able to calculate the covariance, the coefficient of, of correlation, the coefficient of determination, and be able to construct scatter diagram, which I will not uh, be able to construct that. Oh, maybe I can I can do it like in Excel, uh, due to limitations, and then de develop least square regression line. We'll see if we will we'll touch that uh, due to time and the energy level that we have because I've combined two sessions in one session. All right, so with the, the covariance, this one, it measures the strength of the linear relationship between uh, two numerical variables, X and X and Y. Um, that's what we talk about. There will be independent variables and the dependent variables. Uh, this is the uh, the commonly used um, statistical uh, tool 
uh, for, for when you are analyzing a data because it will be about the, the the relationship to say this we want to check if this causes this let's say for example we are talking about um attending class versus passing what the exams so can you see we're talking about so it means there's like what this kind of what condition so want to measure uh, let's say if you want to measure that a kind of relationship you see is there any relationship for a person who is attending the class and also and uh, attending the class versus what passing what the module so those are the kind of what you want to see that kind of relationship. and maybe and someone who does not and who doesn't attend the class and the what and the passing of what module those kind of I'm just giving that as an example for those who do the 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 research or when in the time when you'll be doing the the, the research uh, from the from your topic and if you'll be taking the quantitative research um, um, approach, you will deal with this kind of covariance. You will uh, use the, 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 the data that have collected and come up, I mean, with that with the results. Tell us, is there any relationship from what you were trying to, to resolve? So the formula to calculate that uh, covariance is given like that. Um, it's the same as the one that is on your, on your book, um, which is the, the sum of the uh, x variables minus its mean and multiplied by uh, the difference in fact the total sum of this when they are when there's a product there's a subtraction so that's what i'm saying that this kind of uh, calculation that we need to to do in this instance but we'll see if we can find a better way to come up with this all right so that is the formula so scattered diagram um it is not new to to use like a straight line uh, uh, graph but where we need to plot uh, the, the 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 observation to see if you are able when you draw the line between the is there any kind of relationship okay let's just quickly look at this examples that i that I, I i i made for you um this is the scatter plot or diagram that i'm talking about so we have the first one and uh, this one, it says it has got what a strong what positive what relationship. If you have got the data that are close to each other, when you if you are able to draw a line here, this we can say statistically we say this is a good one. So this one, if you find uh, the, the 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 data and they say okay draw this scatter diagram and you find that it's giving you something like this, we say it has got what a strong negative relation because it's starting high and goes what down the observation i mean starting high and then goes what down then if you just find that they just disperse all over they're just all over the places but it, it's going up yes we understand we say uh, that that kind of data to got what weak positive what um relationship and then the last one is the opposite of this one okay now another um, statistical tool which is important in um, statistics. This one is the correlation of what is the coefficient of correlation of which which is given by um, which is the same as which is equals to the covariance divided by the standard deviation of the X variable and the Y variables. OK, this is the, the formula. So something which is important is that a coefficient of uh, correlation is the number that is between minus one and, and what positive one. If you find the number which is more than this, know that it's wrong, right? And then the interpretation, because um, you cannot just get this number. So it means if the correlation between uh, two variables is zero, if you find that, yes, it's possible that you can find the value of zero. So it means you, know, you just can go say, I know there's no relationship between the, 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 the two. I mean, let's say we're talking about uh, uh, attending the class and uh, and passing the module. We find that mm -mm, these people, I mean, they're not either passing or they're not failing, or maybe they're failing. This would mean there's not that kind of what relationship. And then the positive one indicates the perfect what positive what correlation to so, say, oh yes, this one we are confident. So it means there is a relationship. So we have proved to say there is a positive relation. But if it's negative, uh, uh, those people that are just repelling uh, each other. So as I've indicated, that is the formula. Let's quickly look at this activity. Uh, one, uh, which is, uh, it has got five 
observe, uh, observation taken for two variables. Then to for then develop a scatter diagram with X on the horizontal. OK, let me use Excel uh, to find this so that we can respond. I can see the second question is asking about indicates about that relationship. Ne? Let me quickly let's see if I can open the Excel and do this. So we have this data. I'm going to draw the scatter diagram. Uh, OK. Quickly. I just highlighted everything that it gives. It gives me uh, this diagram that you see. Let me see. Yeah, I'm sure with this color you're able to see. And then I'm going to add the, the that number. Can you see? Yes, I'm able to see, sir. All right, thank you. So I think the second question is say it is asking what 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 type of relationship is this? What can you see about this? Uh, All right, it's fine. Let me take it. Uh, let me copy this uh, to this slide. Oh, no, it's another color. OK. I don't know. OK, it says, what does the scatter diagram developed in at A above indicates about the relationship between the two variables? So, so it means hold it. And then we go, we go to this one. What can we say? Compare that scatter plot with this one. It has got strong negative relationship. Can you see? Yes, uh, I can see. All right. I'm saying you can you see this one. Uh, yes. Compare with this one. Which one? What can you say in terms of this? I'm comparing with what, sir? Can you see this this uh, scatter plot that we did? Yes, I see. And come to this slide. Which yes. is the, the first one it says strong positive relationship. The second one on my right, strong negative relationship. So I'm comparing those two, sir. I'm saying, yeah, respond in terms of OK, here's the second question. It says, what does the scatter diagram developed in part A above indicates about the relationship between the two variables? So it means they've got what negative what relationship? That's what I want. Oh, OK, so yeah, because it's based on this. Can you see? Can you see they were saying a strong? The first one it says a strong positive relationship between the two. Oh, I see. The second one, a strong negative relationship between the two variables. Yes, because those are the, I mean, possible, I mean, questions that you need to, that to be asked and then you need to respond. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. So now compute the in, and interpret the sample what covariance. Um, this is going to be another exercise. And I'm trying to think how we're going to go about it. OK, do we all have Casio calculator? Yes, I do have Casio calculator, sir. Oh, it's only you, it's you and me now. Yes, sir. <laughs> all right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, others, they, they, they are gone. OK, let's let's do this. Um, or should I start with the uh, the manual way? Then we'll do the calculator. Yeah, let's start it in a manual way. OK. All right, so we have this data. We need to interpret this. Let me duplicate this. I'm removing this. We have this data. One, two, three, four, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, X, I, so we look for X, I, then the second one. So what I'm doing here, I'm constructing this table. Are you able to see the table, right? 
Yes, I'm able. All right. X i is four, and then we have six, we have eleven, we have three, we have what? Sixteen. Then y we have fifty, another fifty, uh, forty, we have sixty, we have thirty. Right? Um, yes, sir. Okay. So we need to to calculate what is the sum. The sum of total for this for the first one. It's four plus six plus, plus eleven. Is what? I'm still calculating. Uh, uh, oh, okay. Four plus six plus eleven plus three plus six, 16. Yes, it's forty. And then the one for xi. Let's see. Fifty plus fifty plus forty plus sixty. Two thirty, right? Two thirty. Okay, this is the sum. I want to insert something here. Okay, we will do it later. Okay, with this, um, let me do this. I'm trying to find the space here. I'm not getting it. Let me do it this way. All right. Um, we need to first find the the mean now uh, for the x let's say x which is going to be total number those are what uh, the number of observation there are five and here we've got what 40 uh, which is what eight right okay now we need to find the mean for the y so the sum we divide by five and then it's what 230 it's 46 okay oh this thing doesn't want to move 40 46 yes sir Yes, sir. Yes. Um, these are just top of each other here. Okay. So we have this mean, and then then, uh, from this the information that we get, we go back to our uh, table here and say it's going to be what. Said. Let's say the XI. Minus X bar. Then the same we do on the Y. Is going to be y, and here we have y. All right. So this means that you are going to say like, um, remove this that we can have space. All right. So we say four minus eight. Let me do it this way. Maybe we'll see. You say four minus eight. Is it a negative, negative four? Yes. I want to quickly copy this. For the sake of time. All right. So now you will say six minus eight, which is going to be minus two, uh, we have 11 minus eight. Uh, three. It's three, positive now. We have three minus eight, which is going to be minus five. Negative five. Okay. We have 
16. Sixteen minus eight, which is going to give us what eight? Okay, then we add this the values that we have from negative four. It's negative four minus two plus three minus five plus eight. How? Oh, I got zero. Is it possible? I wonder if you got that. OK, so now let's look at uh, this one here. Where we are going to say. The first observation here is 50. Minus the mean of why we are saying is 46. Four, sir. Positive okay. four. Okay. It's negative. Oh, it's positive four. Okay. Yeah, it let is me positive. Copy. Okay, for the sake of time, let me just copy. Okay, the second one again is four. This this one is going to be forty. Uh, this one is sixty, and then this one is thirty. Okay. Okay. This one is fine. This one is fine. Then forty minus forty-six. It should be minus what? Four. Negative six. Oh, sorry. Sixty minus forty-six. Fourteen. Fourteen, sir. Okay. Then thirty minus forty-six. Sixteen. Uh, let me check. Okay. So it is negative 16. Oh yes, because 30 is smaller than that one. All right, so this is what we have. Uh, okay. So I want to, now I've added this, I got zero. And then when you add this, how much are you getting? Yeah, I also got zero too, sir. Zero. Okay. So, but this is just showing you that, I mean, the answer that you're going to get there is going to be zero. The, the covariance between the two is going to be, to be zero. And when you interpret that, um, uh, that that value, so you indicate that there's no what, there is no relationship between two what two variables because you're going to get zero. So another thing that you need to calculate here um, is the standard deviation for uh, for x for x and also for what for for y. Um, so now, standard deviation. What is that they need, by the way? And you see that's going to be table there after table. Of the table. Maybe while it was here, can we? I want to quickly maybe see if we're able to calculate what other did they say they want to uh, sample covariance, sample correlation coefficients. Um, uh, that formula. Okay, coefficient of relation, this one. Even this one is going to be zero because the covariance is going to be, I mean, the coefficient of correlation is going to be zero because the, the co correlation of two variables is zero, and then divide by any number is going to give us what? Zero is for this answer. And if we need to interpret it. Um, okay. Coefficient of determination, which is denoted by R squared, where is that? It's also like as good what a range between what? Zero and and one. So it means that. It, if the coefficient of determination is one, which we interpret that to mean that 100% of the variable chain 
in the independent variable, which is y, is explained by the word variation in the independent variable of x. All right, maybe be, before we can stop, because I can see that even time is not on our side, I won't be able to, calc to, to do the least square regression, but we'll see how we can present this. I want to us to try to do this using the, the calculator. Um, is it fine if you do it that way? Oh, you gone? Okay. So now here we have got this data. Um, where do we start? Mode. Uh, shift it. What mode? Before mode. Is that we need to clear the memory. Um, Okay, mode one. I'm trying to, to clear my. Okay, all right. So to go to to start, so it means as I've indicated last time, you, if you if you press mode, and then it will display like number one to be called number two state three table four base five ratio. So select number two, which is what state right you need to respond that i'm able to know that we are the same page are we at the same page yes uh, it's uh, number one it shows one var okay VAR. yes then the number two is a plus bx ne? okay let's like let's select number two so when you select yes, number two Yes, when you select number two, it will give you two, like something like a row, two rows where the one is X and the other, the next one will be what? Y. And then there'll be number one, two, three going down and it will be that uh, uh, shaded something. So now let's, let's, uh, maybe let, let, we can first maybe go down. Let, let, let's uh, input the one for X, which is you say four, then equals two. Then you say six equals two, 11 equals two. 3 equals to 16 equals 2, right? Those five observations they're in. Then you can use the right arrow to go to the next uh, row. Then you move, I mean, use the top. Is it facing up the arrow point, uh, facing up to go to, to the number one? Now with Y, we'll set 50 equals to, then another 50 equals to 40 equals to 60 equals to and then that is the last one right did you gather all the the, the, the data set yes sir, i'm doing so all right thank you so now you can press what ac then you go and press what shift one shift one um if you press number let's say what three you can see that it has got number one, some of the x squared, uh, number two, some of the x, uh, three, some of the y squared, like that, like that. Ne? So let's press number two, which is some of the x, then you press equals two. Uh, then you get the answer 40. Did you also get the 40? Sir, so I press what? Number three. Yes. I don't know if what is on the battery. Is it some of X? Yes. I can hear you. Sir. Yes. Uh, my number three is XY to the power two. Oh, okay. Okay, press AC. Let, let's do it together. And okay, let's press shift and one. Okay. Shift and one. And one. Yes, sir. You can you see you get one is type two data, three sum, four var, five reg, six min max. Ne? Okay, now. Yes, sir. Let, yes, let, let's go to number three so that we can be able to find the sum. Ne? Yes, sir. All right. Remember from what we calculated here, we find the sum. Okay, yes, on this screen. Now, okay, press number two. Sorry about that. And then 
equals to, which is like the sum of x, is like sum of those observation. What is yes. what is the what is the value that we got? So I got six. Ah, oh. sixy. In which way? It seems like I'm lost. Sir. Oh, okay. When you maybe with the time when we are capturing the the data. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I think in this way, say, it's too difficult. I think I will. The manual, the, the manual way is the great one, sir. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> okay, it's it's fine. You can use that manual way. But this one, when you put it in here, like what I'm saying, when you got this, uh, like some of X is telling me that it's forty. Okay, let me go shift uh, one again. I want the sum. Uh, the sum of what y, which is number four, equals to is telling me that it's 230, right? And then again, if I say shift and one, I want what is that I want now? A uh, four. Because you are going to do this, you're going to also to get the standard deviation for the x and also for what for y. So I need the standard deviation for uh, for I mean it's a sample standard deviation because if you're using a calculator. It will show there's that one with the sigma notation and the one with the S. So standard deviation for the sample is S. So of in my okay before standard deviation, let me see. I can see the X bar, which is the mean. Let me see number which is number two. It will tell me it's telling me that it's eight. Then again, uh, AC then shift to one, uh, number four. The standard standard deviation because when you calculate the correlation, you will need the standard deviation. Standard deviation for X. Is number four equals to it already I have is five point four three. That is an division for what for the x. Uh, but as you have said that uh, it's, it looks difficult. But for me, I think it's it's easy uh, if you can capture this in the calculator. Then you can get it. Maybe what I will do, I'll, I'll try. I will do the slide um, on the use of this Casio calculator. To calculate this, I mean, because it saves time. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. That that's what I'm trying to do. I will try to do. All right. I mean, um, it will mm. be much easier. Yeah, I will, I will have to do that. All right. Um, let, let's call it a day. And um, thank you so much uh, for being the first to connect and being the last to leave the um, the class. I really appreciate. Just even you um, alone that we're able to, uh, to to cover what we have prepared for 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 the day. Yeah, um, enjoy the rest of evening and your weekend. And my apologies, um, I don't like Friday classes, but I didn't have a choice. I'm behind. We are behind, in fact. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks, sir. All right, thank you. Bye.